Now, look, here, um, we're hey. very glad we've got to George Mann's question, who asked, hi, guys, how do you identify worked flint? I always pick up bits that I have my suspicions about. So stand by to get a, a great authoritative answer to your question, George. And I hope everybody in from uh, our special guest uh, this evening, thank you so much for being patient, James, hanging about there in the green room. We'll be with you in a second. <laughs> Dr. James uh, uh, Dilly, who we know quite well and will never forget um, uh, his uh, generosity and, uh, and kindness in uh, uh, putting on a demonstration for our tour participants actually at Avebury in September uh, last can, year. Unforgettable. Can you put your hand event. on it right now? <laughs> on, top, on top of the now... Um, on top of the Nouth Macehead. Yeah, yeah. James knocked that up in uh, in half an hour. Was it half an hour, James? Is that doing you an injustice? Between Something 20 minutes like and half an hour. Yeah. It's just, it was a breathtaking thing to watch. Listen, mm. let, uh, let me uh, bring uh, James in. Hold on. I'll assign you to guest two. There he is. Hey. <laughs> James, thank you so much for waiting. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Great to hey, see no, you. Not good to see you both. Uh, How you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Um, we're, we're pretty busy at the moment. Um, we're going to be at the British Museum on Saturday for the penultimate day of the oh. uh, World of Stonehenge exhibition. Fantastic. Uh, what are you doing The there? launch of the Festival of Archaeology. So, uh, yeah, we'll be there doing a whole variety of crafts from napping to casting and there'll be graham taylor there who uh, is potted history oh, and okay. sally yeah. pointer who uh, i'm sure some of your uh, subscribers watch her youtube channel as well so um and there'll be loads yeah. of other stuff on so if you're mm. in london and then uh, do do stop by Brilliant. Well, th there you have it, guys. Yes, be there, be square. Oh, you're talking about the festival of archaeology is that the festival of archaeology taking place at butzer, butzer farm uh, well, it's for the British Museum a oh. launch in their component of it. At, oh, right, uh, okay. <clears throat> they do it every year. I, I think they have a designated place that they launch it each oh. year, mm. but each museum seems to also have their own launch, so... Right. I don't Fair know, enough. Confused confused enough. enough. Yeah. Listen, to the to the question in, in hand, James, um, what... Oh. Next... Let's go back one. There we go. Well done. Yay. Uh, how do you identify worked flint? Uh, there's, a, there's a multitude of answers to that, depending on what the tool is, I guess. Yeah. And um, after Rupert's email this morning, I was thinking about it during the day. How, how can I easily answer this question um, during the chat with, with a, a somewhat finite amount of time because you know for yeah. people like myself and lithic specialists they'll, they'll spend days doing workshops where you'll sit there and watch a powerpoint that oh this is the ventral side and all oh, that's a, a negative scar and this is this and this is that and uh, yeah as you said there's many ways that you can answer that question and many approaches to answer that question as well um so I thought it'd be best if I just grabbed a couple of flakes and a couple of natural pieces, so at least then I can point to some of the characteristic features. Okay, terrific. I'll put you full screen, oh, so, yeah. That, uh, well, ho hopefully it will so, show up uh, yeah. fairly well. I mean, I'll, I'll hold things close. So I thought yeah. I'd start with a really nice, obvious flake. Uh, it's one that I've taken off, um, and, uh, yeah, we'll just work from there, really, and, and just get more difficult. I, my uh, webcam looks a little grainy with, with a little bit of... Uh, you're, you're all right. You're, you're all right. Okay. Well, well fine. that's fine then. It'll make my job easier. <laughs> so this is a quite a large flake that I took off uh, probably a few weeks ago. Um, and uh, it's quite a large one. You're not often going to see flakes like this just hanging around, uh, apart from maybe at flint mines or some of the Paleolithic sites. Um, so don't necessarily expect to come across flakes this kind of size too often. But the reason I've got mm. it... Is because the features that will be macro scale, a normal size flake, I'd really have to be holding close towards the screen so you can see it all. Yeah. So for the face that I'm showing you now, um, this is known as the dorsal side, uh, and the opposite side that's facing me is known as the ventral side uh, in archaeological terms. And I always try to remember that the dorsal side 
uh, because it has the ridges and scars down the back of particularly the ridges uh, is a bit like the ridge on the back of a fish where the dorsal fin is uh, and that, mm -hmm. that's about as easy uh, connection as I can make the, the ventral mm -hmm. side as I turn it round is is usually pretty flat and uh, generally fairly featureless in comparison apart from some key bits around the top in terms of what you'd be looking for I guess in for the key features uh, the ventral side should generally be uh, convex uh, as you can see on this flake as I tilt it around so you can see that it's generally convex although that's not a standard rule um, because you can see at the same time for this flake I've selected it is actually ever so slightly bowed um, so <laughs> perhaps not the best example but it's also <laughs> an example of these set parameters ain't very set um, so having certainly having ridges and scars on one side but being pretty flat on the what you know ventral face uh, are key features but as well as that looking at the top where i hit it uh, this is known as the platform this sort of w shape here um, hmm. sometimes i don't know if you can on this one but put it really close you might be able to see these fracture marks or these points of percussion yes, um, we can. The bring yeah. it across uh, they can be a bit of a giveaway um, to, that something has hit it. And certainly on a piece like this, uh, it's had a couple of hits out the top. You have to excuse my dirty fingernails from being in the workshop. <laughs> uh, but you do get platforms at, uh, at two sides of a flake, so it's a, a bipolar removal rather than uh, a unipolar removal of a core. Um, and off that platform that's usually quite flat, but tilt it around a little bit more. So we've got the nice flat platform. Behind mm. it on the ventral face, I've got this bulb of percussion. Uh, and you, this particular feature you'll get with anything uh, that has a conchoidal fracture. So flint, glass, obsidian, even baked porcelain, they should all flake in the same way and they'll all have this set characteristic. Yeah. Um, is, is that a result of the way that energy travels through the uh, through the material through the yeah that's uh, that's very much it. And, and because it's a, a homogeneous material i'm often asked oh well, does flint have grain to it but it doesn't yeah. at all oh, okay um, yeah it, it's sedimentary um as a uh, material it's actually bio sedimentary uh, build up of silica um that forms around uh, sponges sea urchins that's why you get all sorts of fancy colors and bits and pieces in mm. flint so I'll move on for that because that pale colour isn't the easiest to see, but I'll, I'll move on to an equally large flake, which has a fantastic bulb of percussion on it um, as I move it in, into the central area. And hopefully as I turn it and the light sort of hits it oh, wow. in different directions, I'll yeah. bring it back into the middle, you should be able to see that really obvious bulb on the side there. And certainly that point of impact on the top, so yeah, really obvious bulb. And as I turn it round really obvious impact point just off the side here. Um, right. This flake is actually from Haysborough that we picked up off the beach um, <coughs> earlier in the year. Um, a bit really big Paleolithic flake, um, just a waste flake, it hasn't got any retouch on it. Um, mm. But for me, that that's such a big distinctive feature to see that a big heavy point of percussion, big bulb off it. And that does have that ventral face that is concaved as well. It does have the ridges on the dorsal face, which is technically convex, but it's not so obvious. But that, for me, in that checklist, having two or three key features is usually a good sign. And, and those two or three key features is that it has a nice flat platform. It has a very obvious point of, uh, of strike, I guess, where the point where it's been mm -hmm. hit. It has the nice big bulb of percussion, and those are the three main features. It, it does have the other features to it, but the, those first three are quite recognisable. If you look at thinner flakes, um, so this is a flake from Grimes Graves, um, from uh, the later Neolithic um, mines there. Uh, as I hold it up in the middle as well, you can see it has a much, much finer platform, but you can still see it has that quite distinctive, almost half circle. I hope mm. my camera will focus a little bit better. Well, let's see probably got it in the other flake, but you should yeah. be able to see that slight half circle as yeah. I try and work, line my finger up. So we've gone over the platform, it's already got that, um, and it's got that uh, bulb of percussion as I turn it on its side. I line it up to my camera because I'm working in reverse. You can see that bulb of percussion on the back. We've got our ridges, 
you can see from previous flake removals they're on the dorsal side and it is technically convex and the really really fat flat rather ventral mm. face uh, is indeed so i move my fingers concaved so we've got all of those distinctive features that the scars uh, and the ridges are on the convex side the dorsal face and the flat and sometimes again whether you can see these as i move it in the light um you sometimes get rings of shock that go through the stones oh, of me casting yeah. my eye across to see if i've got any other flakes that show it a bit better uh, not so much <clears throat> relying on light a little bit so the, those i guess for flakes are the key features um, that those are what to look for and really it, it takes practice um i mean ju just to give an example um but during the day when i had a bit of a break walked over we've got some fields near us that have a lot of neolithic uh, and bronze age activity on there there, there are, i think by they local landowners are hoping to develop on them so hopefully there'll be a big excavation at some point but a fairly short <laughs> walk over said fields pro produced those again very recognizable flakes that you can see the flake scars on the back that mm. dorsal face yeah. and uh, that is the convex side and the ventral face as i turn upwards you can see very flat um, and concave yeah. and it does have that platform at the back as well um keep moving this yeah, around yeah. just to see if it will focus in but it, it's i guess being able to recognize that kind of consistency and having a feel for it and I, I would definitely say that there's a lot of value um in if you get the chance to handle in either replica work mm. material um or the ancient stuff itself because the manufacture method is exactly the same and it will start to give you those distinctive characteristics that feel that you'll get used to um, and certainly if you're if you've had any experience napping you can see work flim from a distance you really can it, it just sits in a certain way it has a certain color to it sometimes mm -hmm. um, depending on the local so i've brought some um some naturals just to i guess um go okay. against um what uh, what i've been uh, already look, looking at and talking about so i've got this piece of flint here um which for all intensive purposes, could easily be a Paleolithic flake. It, it has a sort of flat top to it here, just about here again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As it catches it, um, really flat top to it here. It's got the ridges on what would be the dorsal face, so it's it is convex again. Um, it's got the um, curved uh, ventral face, and it has in fact got. Uh, a, a few ripples on it um any other features on it not really that would tie it in but it, it could easily be a flake but it ain't it, it is totally natural it, it just doesn't quite have the scars in the right direction but it there is that feel to it as well and, and this is where that lithics specialist would come in that I, if someone brought this to me and said i think i found a flake i i would totally understand why they'd picked this up it, it does have three two or three of those features that uh, are there to identify so that that was that would be a really tricky one and could understand why someone picked that up but i'm often presented with um things like this uh, which uh could be a hand axe uh, on first glance it's got a couple of what appear to be removals down the side it's got a bit of a point to it um you know if you hold it quite uh, securely in your hand you could sort of use it as a bashing implement um, and that uh, I guess stance of holding flints like this and I'm hoping you're not going to capture a screenshot of me sort of looking determined <laughs> <laughs> could do could do so, well, I wouldn't put it past you two um, but um, th th that is often a situation I find myself in it is I've got this stone tool and uh, it it's got a point on it and it, it fits so well in the hand um, that you could see someone using it as a bashing instrument or, or something like this and it, it fit, fitting well in the hand or, or having some chunks or flakes taken out of it um, don't make it a stone tool because by that logic a banana fits well in the hand but it ain't stone tool <laughs> uh, and that's, you know you have, 
the, the amount of times I'll get messages and uh, you know I'll have people come up to me at events that I found this you know I, I'm pretty certain it's a this um, a hand axe or, or or some other really impressive tool and uh, you've got to be that person that uh, breaks the bad news and does it, most people take it yep fine you're the expert you know you're, you're used to this up but some will really hold on to it. Yeah. Oh, well, don't you think it could have been sort of used like this or the absolute classic is well could someone in the past have picked up this natural piece and used it which is yeah how, how do i how do i answer <laughs> yes. that and uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the likelihood is almost certainly not um because you know un unless unless you literally just needed a stone just just to clobber something as we might do in the modern day today, you know, you'd make a tool that uh, it fits the purpose. As you showed, Michael, with, with the axe I made, that, that was flaked in 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. So it's not a huge investment um, to go into making something like that. So if you needed something a bit more precise, if, mm -hmm. if you had the experience, it can be made with fairly limited investment. So you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't put up with using a, a natural piece of flint you know, ju just because you know, yeah. it's a sort of useful shape. And I guess from flakes, actually looking more into tools, um, which you're less likely to find, uh, but it does happen. Um, I guess what you're looking for in, in the types of feature is how the flakes look on the surface. Um, not just a piece of flint that's sort of been nibbled around the edge where it's been knocked about in the ground. So for a very small lump of flint like this, um, it has just had a single chunk taken out the side of it. And it's not a sort of notch tool or anything like that. It has just been bashed against another stone at the beach through attrition. Um, and any kind of field damage like that will generally not be very invasive across the surface. So they won't be very long flake scars. Um, I'll always be slightly jealous of this, but M actually found uh, this uh, at Haysborough. Oh. Um, yes, it's a, a very, very little hand axe, um, but um, it, it is probably a piece of Neanderthal work. And uh, she recognized um, that, I mean, it was just on the floor. She didn't have wow. to dig for it. No, nothing too tricky. But as I start to turn it, this side is a little bit more patinated, but you can start to see in the light the flake scars and how they're quite distinctive across the surface. So you can, certainly as I hold it there, you can really see the ripples of that yeah. plate just above my finger that's, there. That, that's um, quite beautiful. Absolutely fascinating. More. Oh. Uh, Nigel Sadler says it only takes 20 to 30 minutes to knock out an axe, but you need 5,000 hours of practice to do so. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. 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 And true. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad he said that because I, I, I didn't really give you that full uh, an introduction, uh, James. I mean, I know you're known to quite a lot of our fans, but you know, oh, well, no, us, that's, but... uh, I think it, you, you you gave me a a, a good introduction, so uh, <laughs> appreciated. There, there yeah. is a link uh, down below in the dis uh, in the description to uh, James's uh, website, Ancient Craft. Uh, and you'll see yes. the, the the massive background and and but he, I mean you know James has a doctorate out, out of this. Um, the experimental archaeology he does is invaluable uh, mm. to um, from educational purposes, but also to academia it, itself. You know when discerning these things, it's, it's one of those things where you come across it's all very well. You, you tell it best, Rupert, uh, but it's all very well uh, trying to work things out from behind a desk, but uh, actually getting things done, getting your hands well, dirty, and well, hitting. Well, you mean Bruce Bradley? Bruce Bradley, yes. Bruce Bradley, yeah. Our friend Bruce Bradley, the American uh, archaeologist, yeah, he always says uh, about hunting, really, and uh, the people who analyse whatever about hunting techniques. And he said it's amazing how many people write papers about uh, Neolithic hunting and Paleolithic hunting when they've never even so much as gone out and shot a rabbit. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it's it's just so true, you know, that mm. y you need, you know, it's like James's experience hands-on working with stone to give you that understanding of 
what the potentials are within it. You know, there's only so much you can glean from, uh, you know, it's mm. that old thing of you could read any number of books on how to ride a bike. It doesn't mean that uh, you're going to be able to ride a bike when you get on it. Mm. Um, it's brilliant. Thank you so much. James, and thank you so much for, for joining us. You're absolutely right. welcome to... Uh, uh, st stick around. Uh, we don't want to impinge upon your time. If you want to get off and well, don't was, sit on the sofa, that's fine too. Anyway, so I don't, I don't mind. So, but if you want to absent yourself, uh, click the little red button that you can probably see. Uh, when, uh, yeah. But uh, uh, you're very welcome to stick around. And but for the moment, I shall move on to the next question.